This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Panda's HMEE, Kitty Hawk's Fox Bat, a bunch of new decals, and Tacom's Bergapanzer II. New product rundown brought to you by HobbyZone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. Welcome to Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown, the twice monthly show that takes the mystery out of what's inside all those shiny new kit boxes. I'm Elizabeth Nash. I'm Aaron Skinner. Let's get started with Panda's 135th scale High Mobility Engineer Excavator, or HMEE-1. This fast-moving construction vehicle gives the U.S. Army the ability to clear routes and improve infrastructure as it accompanies combat units. An armored cab, along with the ability to fit slat armor around it, gives the operator protection in combat zones. This first plastic kit of the HMEE is molded in tan plastic and features a mostly one-piece cab with bolt, window, and fender detail molded on. The engine cover and radiator grill nose are supplied as single parts. Underneath the hood lurks a detailed Cummins engine with block, plumbing, belts, and fan with ducted shroud. It fits into the large frame rails to which are attached the suspension including shock absorbers, axles for the four-wheel drive and drive shafts, as well as parts for the four-wheel steering that may be posable with planning and covers. The wheels comprise two-part hubs with molded bolts, brakes, and terrifically molded tires that feature sharp tread and sidewall detail including Bridgestone logos. Fuel containers with separate caps, other tanks, steps, and front fenders round out the chassis. Cab features include a floor, seats, steering wheel, dashboard, excavator control levers, and instruments. On top is a roof panel and air conditioner. There's a separate rear wall. It and the other cab windows have sharply molded clear parts for the ballistic glass. Clear parts are also used for lights, including those for the large rear mud flaps. The front end loader mounts on long two-part arms on either side of the hood. Movable hinges and sliding hydraulic cylinders allow the arms, bracket, and bucket to be posable. The same is true for the backhoe, which has a two-part scoop and an articulated arm with the manufacturer JCB's logo molded on as well as a multi-part bracket. The outriggers on the rear are movable to ground the feet if you wish. There are a bunch of other fine details here, including brush guards, exhaust, air cleaner with snorkel, and stowage boxes. Photo etch brass supplies brush guards for the lights and air conditioner, exhaust heat shield, and some other small details. A small decal sheet has instrument faces, a bunch of warning placards, and labels, and markings for a single vehicle. This is a nice looking kit of an interesting and very modern vehicle. Next, here's Kitty Hawk's 148th scale MiG-25 PU. This is the two-seat trainer version of the Foxbat Interceptor. Now, I know that Kitty Hawk's MiG-25 has some issues and it can be a challenging build, especially the intake ramps that are incorrectly represented as FOD doors. But this is the first time we've seen the two-seat version in 148th scale, so we thought it worth a quick look. Surface detail is fine recessed panel lines and rivets, along with a few raised features. The fuselage is broken into large upper and lower sections for the rear, side-by-side -side halves around the rear cockpit, and another pair of parts for the nose and forward cockpit. While plastic parts are provided for the cockpits, this kit includes resin parts for both the front and rear sections, including panels, consoles, bulkheads, and pilots, as well as ejection seats, pedals, and control sticks. Decals are given for the panels. There are also resin replacements for the landing gear legs. The rear of the fuselage encompasses two and a half inch jet pipes with detail inside, separate rear fans and flame holders, as well as exhaust nozzles that receive outer pedals. The big intakes have thin lips and the aforementioned ramps as FOD doors. There's no trunk detail except for intake veins, but you can correct the ramps and add either aftermarket or scratch built FOD covers and fix the problem. Nose and main gear bay detail is sharp and there's structural elements inside of the doors. The massive main wheels have hub features and sidewall logos and placards. The wings are molded in upper and lower halves with fine surface detail and one-piece wingtips, as well as separate control surfaces, inboard fence, and underwing pylons. Horizontal and vertical tailplanes are one-piece affairs with the rudder separate on the ladder. The kit provides a bunch of weapons and a big centerline fuel tank, but most of the photos show the trainer without any weapons. A small photo etch metal fret supplies intake ramp detail and harnesses. Colorful decals provide markings for four MiG-25 PUs, two Russian, one Indian, and one Ukrainian. There's a lot of kit here, and it's nice to have the option of a two-seat Fox Bat. It's been a while since we've taken a serious look at any decals, but we've got a bunch. 
To dress up rodents nice, 1 to 1 4 4 scale C133, Caracal has this set, printed by Cartograph, with options for 12 cargo masters in mats, MAC, and civilian markings. There are also extra numbers, stencils, and stripes. Also in 1 to 1 4 4 scale from Caracal is a set of markings for the C9 Nightingales, the military medical transport variant of the DC-9 airliner. Printed by Microscale, it provides markings for eight Nightingales, four U.S. Navy C-9Bs, and four Air Force C-9As, including one of the aircraft used to return American POWs from Vietnam in 1973. They are designed to fit the venerable Airfix kit. If you like big models of big bombers, then Caracal's sheet for 172nd scale B-52s may be just what the doctor ordered. It provides markings with nose arc for eight Strategic Air Command G and H strata fortresses from the 1980s and early 90s, including several Desert Storm veterans. Cartograph's printing is first rate. Check out the nose arc. Furball Aero Design is known for big sheets with a ton of marking options, and its latest offerings are no exception, starting with the eighth set for 148th scale U.S. Navy Tomcats. Produced in cooperation with publisher Detail and Scale, this massive set supplies markings for 10 F-14As in overall gold gray from the 1980s and early 90s. Size for Tamiya kits, the set includes enough stencils to complete two models. If you prefer your Tomcat smaller, Furball and Detail and Scale have scaled down the popular color and markings of the U.S. Navy Tomcats Part 1 to 172nd scale. It has 11 options, although a couple of aircraft involved in the 1981 Gulf of Sidra incident are shown before and after the shootdown. Two other F-14s involved in the 1989 Gulf of Sidra shootdown of a pair of Libyan MiG-23s are also featured. Finally, from Furball and Detail and Scale comes a set of colors and markings of U.S. Air Force F-102s. It has options for eight Delta Daggers with large, colorful tail markings. One is a camouflaged fighter in Vietnam. Many of the subject aircraft are depicted in detail and scales, colors and markings of the F-102 Delta Dagger Volume 2. This 128-page softcover book goes squadron by squadron through F-102 operators, including Air National Guard units. A section at the front details the color schemes worn by the Delta Dagger. It's a great reference. Also new from detail and scale is Jet Fighters of the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps Part 1, the first 10 years. The early days of jets saw a lot of quick development and short service life for naval aircraft, and this 114-page book covers a lot of ground up to the mid-1950s, ranging from the FH-1 Phantom to the F-11F Tiger, with a lot of aircraft in between, detailed with photos and profiles. Plenty of reference and inspiration for aircraft modelers. Finally, we have Tacom's 135th scale Burger Panzer II, a recovery vehicle derived from the Leopard 1 tank. Equipped with a boom, spade, and winch, the Burger Panzer II can perform maintenance and recovery efforts. More than 450 were produced. The lower hull includes the rear panel, suspension attachments, sponson plates, weld seams, and hatches. The upper hull is pretty complete with the glasses, engine deck details, including vents and grills, non-skid patches, and bolts. The suspension comprises arms keyed for alignment, shock absorbers, road wheels with sharp hub and tire detail, idlers, drive sprockets, return rollers, and more. The tracks are individual plastic links with separate center guides and soft vinyl end connectors that should leave the tracks workable. Recesses at the front of the hull house the winch and mounts for the spade. There is some detail molded inside the separate hatches, but no other interior is given. The distinctive boom builds from top, bottom, and side panels with plenty of detail molded on, including non-skid, a mount that seems to be designed to rotate, although it's not clear in the instructions, with heavy-duty hydraulic cylinders that should allow the crane to elevate with pulleys inside the head and body to be rigged with the supplied nylon thread. Other features include a tow bar, spare road wheels, track grousers, stowed supports to carry a spare engine, tools, towing shackles, commander's hatch machine gun, and more. Clear plastic is used for periscopes and lights. And a small photo etched brass fret supplies the main engine screen and a couple of angle markers. A small decal sheet provides six marking options, five German and one Chilean. There's a lot of possibilities with this kit and it would make for a neat diorama. Absolutely. You can see how it, along with the MiG-25 and HMEE, go together in full build reviews and upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler Magazine. And you can see more new products in the October issue on sale now. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm the chosen one, and I choose to be shopping. This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Pandas H E M. Just one second, just one second. Ah, it's not enough alcohol in that. 
I am good. <laughs> <laughs>